Oh, sure. Run him over. There you go, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you. It's a button, I'm going to push it.
1973, the Bill and Case was sold to the Rand Social Group, who ran them until 1989. From then on, it's been a business attraction that's still producing the higher quality paper that we, Hodgkinsons, will expect you can buy it in the shop. Royal Occasions and the Irish Government. Today, Wookie Hole uses three main sources of raw material. Cotton from America, denim, and hemp. We can't use other rags anymore because they contain too many synthetic fibers. The materials go straight into the beta where they're crushed, so breaking down the fibers. Towards the end of the beating process, any required color will be added to this now orange-like mixture, which is known as stuff along with size to stop the paper from smudging or bleeding when ink is used. The stuff is now pumped into the stuff chest, which keeps it well mixed with its rotating paddle. If it wasn't kept moving, the fiber had are covered in by a lighter frame called a dagger, which fits slightly over the mold to form a kind of shallow tray. A watermark is a desirable picture in paper which becomes clear when held up to the light. The design is formed in copper wire, which is sewn with finer wire to the mesh. Any design on the mesh causes the stuff to be thinner in bases, and when cooched, the water.
time in the night time, we love it down here. And, uh, you know, it really is a nice chamber. We're always seeing which has laid down in this chamber. Father Bar, nice kind of chasing on after. Um, days before electric lights, absolutely pitch black in here. Uh, couldn't see a thing. His candle wasn't really doing it for him, but he could hear the river down there. So he made his way down to the river and he filled this chalice with water. He blessed that water, so it was holy water. Then he sort of was sprinkling it around the cave, trying to find the witch, until he heard an almighty scream, followed by silence. And he turned to the and lovely forehead, a pointy nose in the middle, a big open screaming mouth, and a pointy chin at the bottom. If you're having trouble, just squint a bit. It helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, got um, it. <laughs> so that's the side profile she's looking out to see. And um, it was said that she ate people, and lots of bones were found underneath her chin here. And actually, the early cavers that used to come in. Uh, would come past her and they would spit on her head as they were entering the caves for good luck. Uh, we don't do it anymore because it's a bit <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Poor Dougal got turned to stone. Now we all know what breed of dog Dougal is, don't we? It's a shaggy one. Yeah, know what yeah, no, you got to wait for it. It's, it gets the same reaction each time. I don't know if I really want it on camera. Not a rock actually. Ryler, was uh, it? Yes, he's a rock <laughs> Ryler. Yes, well done. Oh. Yeah, very good. A giant. Now, it's almost impossible to date them exactly. There's so many different variables to their growth. The best estimate is that it grows a centimetre cubed every thousand years. Wow. So about the size of a normal dice or a sugar lump every thousand years. So pretty ancient, that giant there. And the, well, not unfortunately, really. In more recent years, people have come in and they've renamed that stalagmite. They've renamed it Jabba, obviously. Oh, no. So that's Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> uh, a bit about the river. Come and have a look at the max. Now, it is very, very cold. It's seven degrees. It's too cold even for fish. So, uh, but there are some cave shrimp in there and some eels. Um, now it looks quite still, but over 50 million litres of water flow through here every day. Now as we walk through the chambers, we're walking against the flow of the river. Uh, so the river axe is actually uh, exiting the chambers, all of the chambers, down that end down there. Put those heads down till you get to the end of the handrail here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go. uh, watch your head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. I don't want you being like these kids that come in with their phone. Yeah, well, it is quite unforgiving, these blocks. <laughs> All right, keep that head down until you get to the end of the handrail. Watch, oh, watch your head. This is actually a out of four of the Navy Monster Cathedral, so it's quite a big space, this. Um, but you can see it's quite dirty. Very dirty anyway. Now these chambers should really be lovely oranges and whites and reds and things like that, but they are quite dirty. Reason for that is these chambers opened as showcase in 1927. That's when they put the electric lights in. But before that, people coming into the cage would have had flaming torches, producing dirt and smoke and stuff. But the worst problems were the early cave guys. Now to show off the caves, they used to throw paraffin and oil all over the walls and they just set them on fire. Uh, showcase caves usually shortly over time and then left behind all the dirt and soot. A uh, good indication to see that is actually probably being dripped on right now by the straw stalactites. Um, now they're straw, they're light straws, they're hollow in the middle of the waters coming through the middle and dripping on you. Now if they are in a bit of an airflow, they'll start growing to one side. Uh, it was on all of that. Yeah, he is lovely. 
right? This is the walrus. I really love the walrus, isn't it? At some stage, this lovely walrus would have had a stalagmite growing out of his head. Uh, but somebody's come in and sawn it off. Now, there was a lot of damage done in caves in the uh, olden days because it was very trendy for wealthy people to have uh, grottos in the gardens. Now, they fill them with shells and all sorts of things, but uh, crowning glory of a grotto was stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, so, quite a bit of damage done in caves in the olden days. But, it was bonus, now he looks more like the wall. <laughs> with so much light the stalagmite going out of his head. Um, also, you can see where you're going up there now, the broken stalactites on the ceiling. You don't have to uh, sort of dodge the drips. <laughs> um, but they used to be over four metres in length, and they've broken off. A couple of different stories as to how they broke off. One of them is Alexander Pope, the famous poet, who's come into the caves here, seen those stalactites, and wanted them for his grotto in his house. Deposit all over the place, and wherever you got it, it was in the heart of the sea. Um, so come on, Jill. Those electric lights actually went in. There's a good indication of growth rate, though. Yeah, I've seen pictures in America as well. So, uh, and that orange mess underneath, that is Donald Trump's hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, actually, let's go down, it's going to be the sea down there. There's a beautiful spot from the This is the difference between. A draft coming down, like here, coming over here. Okay. Yeah, so more <laughs> actually, you can feel it sort of all over the place, but mainly around the edges. But um, it, it's convection, so the hot air is rising, it's hitting a chamber that we can't really see up here, uh, cooling and coming down, creating a bit of a draft. Uh, yeah. Now we can come through this way. Otherwise, it'd be a shame to miss those chambers. A couple of places you've got a duck. Watch your heads. Duck, <laughs> duck. Yeah. Anyway, that's a cheese tunnel. Um, 
You're going to walk over the uh, bridges now. Now they are high. Uh, it's got quite a bit of a feel, although it's walking, isn't it? It's uh, very much more moonlight in here. For those divers, this is where uh, Neil Armstrong landed. Uh, they come up the rivers, and basically they can't come in here. This was, well, it is just a big piece of water. That's right. the deep so it's uh, All the water in the caves is very deceptive, uh, a lot deeper than it actually looks. Oh, yeah. um, but there are a few holes yeah. uh, coming from the rivers behind the box, and that's where the water is seeping into. But it's not really part of the river system. There's